Oh, wrong franchise. How can the chief breathe in this thing? Oh boy. Welcome back, Save Pointers. I'm Pat, and it is good to be back. We have a lot to catch up on in the world of SPS games, and we are going to get started with one of, if not the most critically acclaimed titles of 2016. Stand by for Titanfall as we drop right into the fast-paced action that is Respawn Entertainment's latest installment in their new IP. Titanfall 2 was released in November 2016. Titanfall 2 improves on the original in nearly every category. The gameplay is as fluid and breakneck as ever, and yet Respawn truly delivers with new equipment, new features, and this time with a dedicated campaign mode. The campaign is especially worthy of praise because it reflects a doctrine of gameplay first on the part of Respawn. That is not to say anything bad about the story, however. I personally enjoy it because it deliberately takes itself less seriously than most shooter campaigns previously seen. There's a sense of nostalgic service to the high-octane 80s action films such as Predator and Commando, where the action is just non-stop. But the core of the story seems to revolve around the story of a boy and his robot, the boy being rifleman-turned-pilot Jack Cooper and Vanguard-class Titan BT-7274. They develop a strong bond with every mission, and it made me feel personally invested in their relationship. I thoroughly enjoyed this simple yet entertaining story for Titanfall 2, and it was only my second favorite part of the campaign. The Titan in the campaign has fewer options in terms of mobility, but makes up for this in the form of dedicated loadouts that appear in multiplayer. On the lower difficulty settings of the campaign, almost every loadout is viable in any encounter, but most are specialized for certain situations, especially on the harder settings, which practically mandate their use. If you're dealing with a lot of infantry units from the IMC, try embracing a scorched earth policy with the incendiary kit that is Scorch. If you find yourself on the business end of brute and North Star Titans, which simply cannot sit still, try Tome. Landing enough shots will allow you to lock on a salvo of rockets to deal some extra damage while adding a Titan-sized AWOL for extra protection. And Ronin is fun for getting the drop on enemies with your phase shift ability followed by a swift strike from his gargantuan sword. Before I move on to multiplayer, I have to say that the developers did a phenomenal job with the level design in the campaign. Every sequence provided unique challenges for Cooper and his momentum-based movement. One of my favorite levels was Effect and Cause, in which the player must utilize time travel, combined with boost jumping and wall running to navigate the ruins of a research facility for the IMC. Multiplayer itself is where Titanfall 2 truly shines. The combat is more competitive and streamlined than ever before. The maps feel incredibly balanced with an aesthetic homage to the world and conflict that Respawn has established in the lore. To start with what's different about Titanfall 2 when compared to its predecessor, pilots now have a choice of seven tactical abilities that serve distinct purposes on the frontier. Grapple maximizes your mobility in making the scaling of tall structures a breeze, as well as providing some satisfying melee kills when hooking enemy pilots. AWOL is a fun new trick that provides you with frontal protection in addition to amping your weapon damage when shooting from behind the shield. And Pulse Blade, my personal favorite, gives you a throwing knife that functions as a temporary scanner when it lands. But seeing as it is a knife, it can also tag pilots for delicious one-hit kills with a follow-up scan for additional hostiles. Stim and Cloak make their return from Titanfall 1, along with a handful of other abilities, and players will also have a plethora of new weapons to play with. In addition to the aforementioned new weapons from the campaign, we get to see new weapons of all types, such as the Mozambique, a semi-automatic pistol that fires shotgun-like energy streams, the L-Star, an energy-based LMG that overheats rather than reloads a magazine, and the softball grenade launcher in the new family of Grenadier primary weapons that fires sticky grenades that kill anything that gets beamed with them. My one issue with the new weapon sandbox for multiplayer is that pilots now have to choose between a secondary weapon and an anti-Titan weapon, as I find myself wanting to use my B3 wingman or my Mozambique, but at the cost of being able to engage enemy Titans. Thankfully, this is alleviated with the inclusion of Grenadier weapons as a primary option for pilots, and reload times are often fast enough to negate the need for a secondary weapon anyway. It shows how nearly every aspect has been geared toward adrenaline-fueled gameplay. Finally, the Titan loadouts have been given a complete overhaul from the original. Just as in Titanfall 2's campaign, multiplayer has you choose from six specialized chassis of Titan. Each of these Titans are catered to specific situations, and yet they all feel immensely satisfying to use. Ronin is for those that want to get up close and personal and go on a melee frenzy, Tone is for those who want more situational awareness and precision, and Scorch is great for farming AI with his flame-based abilities in modes like Attrition and Bounty Hunt. My personal favorite has to be Ion. 
He seems to be the jack of all trades Titan, but he rewards players with good aim and reactive strategy based gameplay. His Vortex Shield is rather strong and can last quite a while. And his biggest payoff, the Laser Core, is one of my most favorite moments of Titanfall 2, and it has saved my hide on more than one occasion. Nothing seems to be more satisfying than firing a tremendous wall of raw energy that disintegrates pilots and tears through enemy titans like a thousand degree knife through a Coca-Cola bottle. Despite the circumstances of its impact on the industry, Titanfall 2 is nothing less than a masterpiece in every aspect of its design, improving on the original by and large at the delight of its fans. Respawn Entertainment has done it again. Well, that is all we have for today's briefing. Keep your eyes and ears open and fingers on your triggers, save pointers, and I'll see you next week with more updates in the FPS and Xbox community. Game on.